Good evening, brothers and sisters. And yeah, we, I'm privileged to be able to share with you tonight. And I hope that as we um, just go through the Bible and what the Word of God says to us, that we'll be encouraged and that we, as brothers and sisters, will be um, just really strengthening our relationship with the Lord in this time that we that we're all locked up and yeah tomorrow is the day that they're gonna ease the lockdown for us but yeah we've all really learned in the the days past that they're not really letting us out yet but yeah may we continue to to delve into the word and continue to find God's um, grace for our lives and and this evening I just I want to start with um, just a scripture that we all know so well because you know um just sitting here and listening to the birds and watching the the bunnies go around and and just seeing the sunset um, behind me I'm just so encouraged by um, God's creation and how beautiful he um, he's made it for us around us and I mean we are so blessed by this campsite that's sitting empty at the moment and um, I've had many many moments of uh, a time where God has spoken to me on this property, even before we lived here, before before we came to Fienigen, when we were still living in Pieterstein. But what's happened is there's been so many moments where God has spoken to me in this very hall that I'm sitting next to. And that's why I really wanted to just, this evening, just come sit outside here and, and just um, take in the sunset and the, the leaves that are turning color and the, the flowers that are going down and the leaves on the ground just show, speaks about the change in season and just like we in this lockdown time i believe god is calling us to a change in season in our spiritual lives as well and and many guys have spoken about it many brothers have have encouraged us many uh, brothers have warned us but yeah tonight i'm just here to just to speak about just um two simple scriptures in god's word where he just encourages us that we should go forward and we should go in this world and make a difference um now those of you that know me know that i share quite a bit on on this verse and it's in ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 it says for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves it is a gift of god and it's amazing that god gives us this gift and the bible says that they um, there is none righteous, no, not one. And all have sinned and come short the glory of God. And what, what's so beautiful is that, that God has given an, uh, us an opportunity, those of our, us who are born again, to be saved through faith and to receive that gift of God. And all of us are so grateful for gifts in our lives. And, and it's amazing. I was, I was just reading through um, the book of Acts and I was reading about um, the apostles and how they were just acting really um, out that which they've learned from the Lord Jesus. Now, um, I've just two two things that I just picked up there. Is as I was reading, we also watched the movie of uh, Paul, the Apostle of Christ, and it was such a such a gripping movie on on how um, Luke, I think it was Luke, and and Paul was was going around and Paul was in jail um, and it was just such a, a revelation of, of how horrible the conditions were for the apostles in those times. But it's amazing, through the worst of difficulties, they kept their faith and they continued to share the word of God with everyone. They continued to have grace and mercy on those who persecuted them. They continued to, to love Jesus even though it was going a bit rough. And it's amazing, I was so challenged by that because what happened is each one of those guys received this gift of salvation from the Lord Jesus. But what was so beautiful, before the Lord Jesus went up, he said to them, um, go and tarry in the upper room. And, and it's amazing, they, they sat together there and, and his promise to them was that you will receive power. And it was so amazing, I was, I was just thinking about this because um, many people in this world receive the gift many people um, at some point or other at some camp at some bible study at some ladies tea it happened to us quite a bit they give their hearts to the lord jesus at, at the senior camps especially um, we see that uh, kids 
children give their hearts to the Lord and they, they surrender their lives to the Lord Jesus. And what happens is they receive the gifts of salvation. And, and it's amazing. I, just, I want to take you guys back to, to those moments, those days where you just realize for the first time that you're truly free. I want you to, to remember those days where you were, um, where you were sitting in a moment and a tear would just start rolling down your eyes because you've just realized from how much you've been saved. And are those moments just not so special? I mean, I've sat with, uh, I mean, and not that I'm special, but I've sat with so many people who broke down, broke, uh, in Afrikaans we say, yet gebreek. But they just broke down before the Lord and, and they just cried because of their sin and the weight that the change of this world has been on them. And what happened is in a moment they were free. And in a moment you and I were free. Now friends, if, if, if there anyone tonight listening at the, to this video um, and you haven't had that experience, my encouragement is that you'll just fall on your knees in a quiet place before the Lord. And just to speak to him. Read the Bible. Read what the Bible says. Read um, Ephesians chapter 2 and Romans chapter 3, I think, is a, another scripture. And John chapter 3. But we need to understand that we've received this gift of salvation. Now, as, as we're talking to, to people that are um, in the fellowships and, and people that are born again um, this evening, Guys, I wonder if you can really remember those times. I wonder if you can remember the, the moments that followed when you received the gift of salvation from God. I wonder if you can remember the happiness that was in you and the, 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 the energy with which you went out and spoke to people about Jesus. And how easily you forgave people in those times. And how easily you... Um, you got over nonsense and how easily you put away the sinful things of this world but it's amazing as we've gone on with the lord it's almost as if we've forgotten about the gift it's almost as if we start um, letting in all those things that we finally got rid of the day that we were got born again but it's amazing these people the apostles we're coming back to the, the apostles what happened is they all received the gift but what was so beautiful is Jesus said to him, no, no, go wait in the upper room till you receive the power. You see, this gift can only really work in this world, can only really be truly effective when we receive the power that goes along with it. But you know what the, the problem is, is this power goes, is connected or goes hand in hand with difficulties or um, some pressure. From this world and that's the part that we often shy away from but this evening my encouragement is just that um, we we ensure that as we've received this gift maybe you've forgotten about the power maybe once there was a time where you've received that power the, f the fulfilling of the holy spirit but you've long since went past that point tonight's the night where we can just sit and become quiet before the lord and say lord I need a top up. And it's amazing. Renee also shared about this and just got me thinking of it. Um, because we so often, we so often leave the Holy Spirit behind. You see, because the Holy Spirit will convince you and I of sin, righteousness, and judgment. As it does with the world, it also does that in our lives. So if you are up to no good in your life or busy with things that you shouldn't be busy with, the Holy Spirit says, no, no, this is not right. But what happened is in um, the book of Acts, I've just been uh, reading around there um, in chapter 5, 6, and 7 was the chapters that I read. It's amazing in, in Acts chapter 6, I just want to read for us there. Acts chapter 6 and verse 7. Um, and it says so beautifully here, it says, And the word of God increased, and the numbers of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. Now, I just I was thinking about that very verse. And, and how do you think that the numbers of the disciples multiply so greatly? It's because there were men and women that were so convinced. They received the gift and they were full of the power of the Holy Spirit. 
and they were sharing with those around them. And they made disciples as Jesus had commanded them. And it's amazing. How the, the first question that I want to um, leave us with tonight is, have you been making disciples? Or have you been so happy with your little saved Christian life that you haven't been effective in the world around you? And it goes on and it says there, um, and a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. Um, and Stephen, full of power and faith, excuse, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. And it's amazing, he was busy amongst the people. He wasn't sitting at home being thankful to God for his happy little life. No, no, he was amongst the people doing wonders and miracles. Now, it's amazing, I, I, um, I've, I've just been thinking about it, and I, I can imagine him healing some people, and I can imagine him um, supplying to the need of some people. But I think so many of those things would have been speaking to people, counseling them, sharing with them just the simple word of God and what Jesus had done and how he loved us. So it's amazing um, that, that Stephen was amongst the people, busy sharing and, and talking. And, and it's amazing, um, the challenge here becomes, in this time of lockdown, we can't really go anywhere a lot. But have you and I been phoning our people? Have we been phoning the people that we've been sharing with? Have we been there to the, for them, listening to them, sharing with them? Or have we just been waiting as out, waiting this apparent trial out? And it's amazing, I don't think this lockdown is, lockdown is a trial um, to us as Christians. Maybe it may be a trial of your faith, but, but it's not a trial. I mean, it's not very difficult. In fact, we've got, all gotten a bit too fat from eating too much. And we've gotten um, too comfortable. We're sleeping way too much. And it's amazing. Um, God has always also done beautiful things with our relationship with our children. Um, it's amazing. I told Lisa the other day that I've gotten to know my children really for the first time. I've started seeing their personalities. But the question is, have you and I been out there doing wonders and miracles, even if it's over the phone? So and, and it goes on and it says, Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and the Cyrenians and the Alexandrians, and of, of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And it's amazing, the moment that he was exercising his gift in the power of the Holy Spirit, there came a resistance. There came supposed doctors of the law, as they were talking, or the people of the synagogue, the religious people, came and they started disputing with him, which he believed. And it's amazing how many of us sometimes act as Pharisees, where we're disputing with those filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't know, when, when I was newly born again, it's amazing, um, I, re I remember Renee came to share with us at the, those times, and and the one thing that I was never convinced of was the baptism, the water baptism. And, and it's amazing, I, I, I always said that um, that's something God has to reveal to me. And, and um, one evening we had a, a prayer meeting in Pietrastein. I remember it so well, I think Gie van Nadia was there, and Gerardus and Liesel and Mariska, and Jos and I, I don't, uh, uh, Stephen might have been still there, our oh, Stephen um, that was there with us in the beginning. And it's amazing. We were, we were standing there together praying. Renee was there as well. And in a moment, in, I, I can't even explain it. God just said, listen, this is the step of obedience. And it's amazing of the, of the I think, nine people that were standing there, seven of us got baptized that, baptized that very Sunday. And it's amazing how God can come and he can just encourage us. But you know what happens is you and I so easily stand in the way of God's encouragement in our lives. We so often stand in the, in the way of that power that needs to come into our lives. And um, it's amazing. It goes on there and it says, And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. And guys, does that not speak of a gift that works with power? Does that not speak of a gift that was within him that moved mightily? And convinced people. And they were not able to resist it. They were not able to, to dispute to the point where they couldn't speak to him anymore. 
And it's amazing. I, I wonder how many times you and I dispute, but from our own reasoning or from our own mind or from our own um, memory. How many times we, we talk to people and we share with them from a place of knowledge rather than allowing God to do the talking. Allowing God to speak through us, the power of God to work effectively in the world around us. I wonder if, if we won't find less resistance in the world around us, in the people we're working with, if you and I don't relax and give God more power in our lives, more chance to work in our lives. And it's amazing, I was just thinking about these things, and, and oh, Stephen, he ended up being stoned. Because what happens is in chapter 7, let's just read there. Um, in chapter 7, he actually explains to the Pharisees exactly the history of how the Jews had always doubted God. Um, and as he spoke to them, and it says um, in verse 55, it says, But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, Sorry, verse 54. It says, When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried with a loud voice. This was the resistance to the power of God. And stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And, and it's amazing. I was just um, thinking about this, this whole story. Stephen um, experienced real suffering. The, all of the apostles experienced real suffering in those times. Paul being imprisoned for what he believed in. But... You know, when, he, when those guys spoke, the gift and the power could not be resisted in their lives. And it's amazing, we, we, um, we're not, I don't think we're in a time of suffering, as I said previously. But what I do think is we're in a time of peace and quiet, where you and I can ensure that we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's amazing, Paul was called um, on the Damascus ro Road, and he was in a time of blindness for three days. And then he could see. And it's amazing. It was the gift, I think, that scattered um, all those apostles across the world. And by the grace of the Lord, they've been scattered so that you and I could have the, the presence of the gospel today. But I think it was the power that made them effective. Now, the challenge tonight, as I end off, is that, that you and I will ensure that we receive this power. We ensure that we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And, and it's amazing, those, um, I think Joe is also going to share on this, but, but those guys waited in the upper room. There was a, a, a moment of waiting before they received the Holy Ghost and all His power. You and I just have to, to, I think not really wait, but wait on God. Make sure that we get to a place where you and I can make sure that this gift that was within us is effective and this gift that's within us works well. So my prayer is that tonight or even tomorrow, you and I will get to a place where we will say, Lord, I want to be effective when all of this ends. Lord, I want to work for you in the time that comes next. Guys, I think we're going we're gonna, to um, have lots of, lots of time still for the next month or two. Let's ensure... That we spend that time with the Lord. Let's ensure that we, we find the moment and the, the opportunity to see Jesus really who he was. Remember that which was in the beginning, the first love that's within us. So yeah, I'm, I'll just pray for us. <clears throat> Ach, Lord, we we extremely grateful, Lord, that your word is so accurate, Lord. And your, that your word um, really shows us really who you are, Lord. And Lord, we're so grateful for this gift that we've received. And so many of us have received the gift over the last few years, Lord. In the last 10 years, Lord, we've witnessed a great multitude of people being saved. A great um, many people receiving the promise 
of Jesus, the salvation, the gift, Lord, that you've um, made possible through the sacrifice of your son. Lord, but we've seen so few Lord, we've seen so few people um, really um, going into the full power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we're just so grateful that, you, um, that you're working with each one of us. Lord, I pray that we'll have those moments where we can just realize what you've done for us, Lord, and we can, can stand in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray this all in your name. Amen.